So back to being a female, what would you say the biggest challenges um, you have faced as a female senior leader? So now you're at the top. What it, is there any particular challenges that you faced now you're at the top? I think, you know, I think thankfully I've been able to lead a lot of the agenda internally on our HR um, processes, procedures, and also just kind of then like laying the foundations of um, how the structure should be set and how we, women in, you know, business should be, you know, look, you know, treated and stuff like that. So that's been, you know, good in terms of internally. I think, um, I think challenges, you know, you'll always face, um, certainly maybe with an older generation, and I'm, I'm not necessarily saying that everyone is like that, but you certainly get the times where um, you get suppliers in who don't realise that you're the ops director and you're going to be making the cups of tea, um, <laughs> which is always a fun one for me. Um, it always leads into that gender stereotypes and they always have a kind of shocked uh, shocked face and they realise that I am the person they came to see not the not the tea lady um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's a funny one but I think that you know that just comes with education and comes with hmm. you know those sort of things so I think we'd be lucky enough to to not face that in in this company really um, and I think you know you know people respect respect the position so it's quite good Hmm. And would you have any advice? Um, so this wasn't part of my list of questions, Hannah. But would you have any advice for females that are on the way up to being, becoming a senior leader that is perhaps facing adversity because of their agenda? What would you recommend? And any tips that you would like to share? I think it's. Um, I think it's reminding potentially if you're ever in situations where you kind of end up having to be put into gender gender stereotypical rules. I think that it's setting boundaries for me that within the organisation to say, okay, you know, if I'm getting asked to make the tea, then oh, that's fine, but maybe X Mike could do this now or someone so could do that next time. And it's just making sure that those boundaries are there, really. And it's about, and it's not about being aggressive at all. It's just about educating. It's just about saying, you know, that's fine, but, you know, this is equal. So therefore, you know, maybe someone else can do it next time. I'm happy to help. So I think for me, it's just those sort of things. And I think it's also about being confident enough and not, you know, you know, being being strong with what you think and being confident with what you think and that it's not, you know, you shouldn't be afraid to speak, basically, just because you might, you know, if you're afraid of what someone might think, you know, often enough, you know, we're, we're often more than not, more than not, women tend to underestimate their abilities. And I think sometimes having that confidence to actually go, actually, no, I'm, I'm just going to say this and go for it is, is a big, powerful piece. Yeah, and there's definitely a balance, isn't there? 100% about confidence, but it's the 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 not being needing to be aggressive and not trying to change you as a you know as a female yeah, yeah. To, to play up to that into that business world. That's you know I've definitely seen that with younger people earlier on in their professional career, thinking that they need to be more masculine than themselves simply to get ahead and um, yeah that would definitely be my sharing of my advice as well your strength is in your femininity and you bring yeah. what you bring to the table okay so um as a successful female in e-commerce Hannah do you ever get imposter syndrome and if yes how do you deal with it um always <laughs> it's the case <laughs> um I think it's something that I used to have a lot worse than I do now um, I always think sometimes that oh my god I'm a fraud or something like that. But I think I often then just like I often I also often then talk to myself, and I think it's a lot about self love, isn't it? But I also think I need to talk to myself like if it was my best friend, I would never say to her, you're a fraud, you're not good enough because I know how how amazing they are. So I think it's just having confidence in your conviction that you know you've come to this stage, you know you've worked really hard for it and you know you know what you're talking about and you just kind of have to just park it really, you know, like with anything that these sort of like intrusive thoughts, they're ones you can either take and use or you can take and park them. So for me, it's about acknowledging that that's there. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's also one that you shouldn't let it, stop you from doing anything um, and make sure that you overcome that hurdle 
Yeah, absolutely. And has there been any kind of mentors or coaches along the way that have helped you with that at all? Um, that's a really good question. I would say, like, definitely, I would say for me, I've got a really good network of, of friends that are, you know, all very similar, actually, in terms of, you know, ambitious and, um, you know, trying to, to do well for themselves. And I think we have a really good network of people that kind of, support each other you know when you have those times when you're feeling like you've got low self-confidence or you don't feel like it's the right move that you've kind of got a, a group of cheerleaders who know you personally and professionally that you can um that can really tell you to you know buck up and go and go for that and try and achieve it and there's definitely a few times in my career where actually I may have potentially not made decisions and had a very good friend go you know you're this you've done this you've achieved this just go for it and it's been really good. So I think for me, just having a really strong group of females around me and of peers and friends that are kind of on the same path is probably something I'm really lucky to have in that case. Mm, that's nice to hear. And would you say men as well have been part of your professional network in terms of yeah. championing and supporting you as well? Yeah, absolutely. So I've to my stepdad, he's um, obviously the MD here at Hampers.com. He's very supportive of you know like at the end of the day he's kind of just let me he believes in what I'm, I want to do and has kind of let me drive the agenda here in terms of you know the equality and all those sort of things as well so he's always championed me and women and stuff like that as well so that's been phenomenal and also my partner as well he's um he's quite happy to just you know let me be a successful person and always championing me to when I'm doing well and stuff so that really helps as well just having that like having a partner that's um clearly happy to just let you thrive and, and grow and and be ambitious which is fantastic yeah wonderful wonderful okay so we're on to our final two questions so for a woman beginning their for a woman beginning their journey as a senior leader what would be your top tip Just being confident with your abilities. Just don't oh, Hannah, I can't hear you. I think maybe the... Um... Hello? Yeah, that's better. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. So for me, it would be, um, it's being confident in your abilities and not ever, I think, not ever letting know, like that, any sort of self-doubt come in for me. I think it's really important to to stand, stand in a group and a board and you know, be confident in your abilities, be able to articulate what you're doing and why you're doing these things and and not feel the need to compete. I think that if you're strong enough and you're confident enough, you don't have to, you're not there to try and compete. You just need to show that you're a, you're clearly a bit able and that you're able to deliver and show value to the company. So I think those are the top things for me is like take the emotion out of it, just just deal you know be confident and, and show the business why you're adding value hmm. I like that so take the emotional and stand for you as an individual rather than yeah. being competitive and going back to what you said earlier as well it's not it's shining your femininity being an individual being confident yeah. in yourself mm -hmm. okay and then finally in terms of your professional development what books or podcasts or mastermind groups have you found most helpful in your career and why um, so I have for quite a while started listening to Diary of a CEO and I always like that I like the variety of guests that they have on it and for me just the, the ability to have that authentic conversation um, where people aren't judged or anything like that and you know you just get some really valuable insights into a how you know how you can deal with growth and development and as well as just insights and in how people run businesses and how they've been successful so I think, you know, it's always good to learn that. I also think um, I've recently started going to some more networking events and events in the e-commerce and um, delivery space um, with IRX. And they've been fantastic. Um, just like being there and like listening to, to other people who are going through the same thing as you is invaluable because you sometimes work so hard and you think you're just doing everything alone and you realize that like almost all companies are having the same problems of you and and then some of us also come up with solutions to those problems so they're they're really helpful as well mm. and then also recently I've listened to um e-commerce masterclass with Chloe Thomas and that's been uh, that's really good in terms of you know very 
to what we're doing here at hampers.com there's some really really good podcasts on there and really relevant to us and in terms of just again it's understanding what other people are doing and how people have come up with solutions to things already so they're they're really good for me wonderful thank you um you mentioned about networking as was that a networking organizations irx did i hear that correctly yeah so mm. irx is one that i've recently been going to quite a few of their uh, events and um they're just you know they're within the e-commerce and delivery logistics and internet retailing basically so that is um for me they've just had some really good people talking and attending those and they've um yeah they're a really good learning learning space okay well thank you for sharing those as well um and that draws us to the end of the interview thank you so much hannah is there anything else that you would like to say that's inspiring or lifting or empowering as part of international women's day i mean you've said some wonderful nuggets of advice (laughs) and tips already I don't I don't I think it's more I think it's just being female and being a leader and just being authentic like don't try and change yourself to try and adapt to anything it's just I think you know with anything you know you'll get more from people and with people if you can just be yourself and I think that to me is the most important thing whether that's you know a female with masculine energy or anything like that it's just be yourself don't try and change yourself to to anything just be confident in your abilities